Hello and welcome back to Anton Math. Now in this video we're going to look at graphing some more polar equations. We're going to look at a particular type of shape that is sometimes formed from some of these polar equations. So let's go ahead and graph it out and then we'll give it a name and start talking about some of the properties it has. So we want to sketch 2 plus 2 sine theta. And actually this was poorly set up by me. Uh, this is r equals 2 plus 2 sine theta. So let's just go ahead and say 2 plus 2 sine theta is equal to r. Now just like in the last video, that last problem we did, the first thing we want to do here is we want to set up a reference graph. So I'm going to set up my reference graph. So those skills in chapter 5 are going to come in really handy here. Now remember I always want to graph from 0 to 2 pi. It doesn't matter what the period of the trig function I'm graphing is, I always want to graph from 0 to 2 pi. The reason is, again, when we're graphing on the polar coordinates, our single rotation around from my polar axis all the way back around to the polar axis is 0 to 2 pi. So if we graph from 0 to 2 pi on the polar coordinate system, we're going to graph everything that this equation is capturing. So we need to be able to refer to this from 0 to 2 pi. So let's go ahead and cut up our graph into these key points. That we need for sine. Now notice I have two things going on here. I have a vertical shift of 2 and I have an amplitude of 2. So that means I'm going to be going all the way up to 4. So we need to give ourselves enough space on this um, axis here. And remember on our reference graph my vertical axis is my r, my horizontal axis is my theta. So again, we're just taking our equation, r equals 2 plus 2 sine theta, and for a moment we're going to pretend that it's not in polar coordinates. We're going to pretend that this is actually a rectangular coordinate equation, so we can set up a rectangular, graph, uh, a rectangular graph for us to refer to, to graph this in polar. Now I start, uh, just remember our horizontal axis for this graph is now here, so I'm going to start at 2, I'm going to peek out at 4, at pi over 2, I'll hit pi, at pi I'll hit 2, at 3 pi over 2 I'll hit 0, and at 2 pi I'll be back up to 2. So my graph of 2 plus 2 sine theta looks a little something like this. Okay, now we're going to use this to reference to graph our polar graph. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this graph looks like. I'm going to draw out my polar axis first. Now I know that I need my r is going to be up to 4, so I need to mark out at least to 4 on my polar axis. We'll give it lots of space so we have some room to work with. Now there is polar graphing paper that can be helpful. If you can find some polar graphing paper, you can find a picture online that you can then print out to try, draw, try drawing these graphs. And what it is is it shows the axes, and then, um, like, and when I say the axes, I mean these axes that aren't really here in our polar plane, but we use as a reference for our angles. And then it's going to have some very lightly colored circles at these different numbers so we can see what we're doing. So I'm going to try something new in this video here. I'm going to give us some lightly colored circles. We'll draw one. Oops, that's not what I want. We'll draw one with radius 2 centered at the origin. And we'll draw another one with radius 4. Now these are just going to be kind of a measurement tool while we graph this out. Okay, so it looks like I actually need my graph here to be a little bit taller these kind of reference lines. Alright, now we're ready to graph. Now the reason I did this is it's going to be a little bit easier to see. Now we start from theta equals 0 and as theta goes from 0 to pi over 2 my r is going from 2 to 4. Now we also have a rate incorporated in here. Notice that it's going from 2 up to 4 very quickly and in this last about third of the way between 0 and pi over 2 I'm not increasing towards 4 very fast, am I? So what that means is, when we draw this out, I'm going to be going, as I start at the angle 0, I'm going to be moving away from the origin very quickly. 
and then as I get closer and closer and closer to pi over 2, I'm, oops, I'm not going to be getting towards 4 as fast. So it'll look a little something like this. And my graphs aren't perfect, but we'll see how good we can make it. Now, as my angle changes from pi over 2 to pi, on my reference graph, we see that that's going to be going from r equals 4 to r equals 2. So we're going to be doing similar to what we did on that side, but in the opposite direction. So I want to kind of mirror what we did. We see it's actually very similar to this first part, just in the other direction. Now when I go from pi to 3 pi over 2, my r is going from 2 down to 0, isn't it? And it's going to 0 very fast at first and then slows down. So let's see how that looks. My r is going to 0 very fast. And remember when I say r, I mean the total distance from the origin is a straight line. And then it kind of slows down. Here it's not going to 0 as fast. And from 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi, I'm going from 0 back to 2. So that's going to look a little something like this. OK, now I drew these circles just for us to have a reference. And this is something that you can do if you don't find that polar graphing paper. Let's take these away, though, and see what we have. There we are. This little shape here with this dimple at the bottom, this is my polar graph of the equation r equals 2 plus 2 sine theta. So in other words, depending on what angle I'm looking at, my r is going to match this equation when I plug in that angle theta. So when I plug in theta equals 0, I have sine is 0, so my r equals 2. When theta equals pi over 2, sine is 1, so I have 2 plus 2 is 4, which is exactly what we have up here, isn't it? Uh, up here we know that this is going to be 4 because we drew that circle in to give us that reference. Now a little bit about this graph. Uh, notice that it looks kind of like an upside down heart, doesn't it? Um, and not a real heart, but more like a Valentine's Day heart. We have this little kind of um, indent here that you usually see on the top of Valentine's Day heart. Now it doesn't come to a point at the end, right? If it was a Valentine's Day part, it might come to like a point like that. But that's not what we have here. It's going to be smooth on the bottom. But because it looks like a heart, this graph is actually called a cardioid. We call this a cardioid because it looks like a heart. And it always has an inner point that touches the or origin. Every time we draw a cardioid, what we mean is that it has that little dimple there, and that dimple just touches the origin. Now in general, equations of the form r equals a times the quantity 1 plus or minus cosine theta, or r equals a times the quantity 1 plus or minus sine theta are cardioids. Now notice that we don't need this information here to actually graph it. We were able to graph it just fine by using a reference graph, and that's always going to be the case for these types of problems. But it is helpful to know what you should be looking at before you start, isn't it? If I can look at an equation and say, oh, I know what this equation is. This is a cardioid. Then when you draw your graph, there should be no surprises. If you don't get that dimple at the origin, you know there must be something wrong with your reference. OK, so that's cardioid. Now in the next video, we're going to look at roses. So we'll see you there.